Very good afternoon. Welcome to the webinar. My name is Kath. I'm um, your host for today and uh, we are talking about the feeding setup in C21, also known as Dairy Plan. Some people might call it DP or DP21. All of those combinations amount to the same uh, program from GEA. So before we start with the um, program itself, just a few bits uh, about the webinar. So welcome along if this is your first one with us. We're trying to do a lot of these at the moment where we are all kind of locked down. So it just allows people to um, sort of share the word and share our knowledge really uh, with what's available out there. So if you have a question at any time during the webinar, by all means, you can type it into your control panel, which is just move to the right hand side of your screen. I usually come to these at the end and then we can go through them. So that's absolutely fine, but you can type it in at any time. Alternatively, you can raise your hand. So if you have a question, it uh, takes a bit too long to type, just click on the hand button again at any time. I will come to these to the end and then we can always open up the phone line um, and you can ask your question directly. So either one of those, absolutely fine. Um, just as a general audio, if you can't hear me at the moment, just check your settings again on the control panel. Should be set to computer audio if you've come in through that way or a phone call if you've dialed the number. Um, hopefully you're all good and we'll, um, we'll carry on. So that's brilliant. So let me go into my program here. Let's minimize my background a minute. Whoops, I better shut that one down actually. There we go, right. I can't make that any bigger, but there we are. That's our dairy plan. So hopefully you're all familiar with this one so far. Um, so certain steps that we go through to set up the feeding. Uh, the very first thing really is to consider what groupings you want. So whether you want um, heifers and cows fed different rates, um, in which case it's all derived from what group they're in. Um, now, animals can move into groups um, on an event or on a vet action in an automated way. So when you have a, um, a calving, for example, you can set up the calving or dry equally to automatically move into a new group. So from the main screen, we've got data entry. So any one of these takes you into DP vet. So DP vet is the component of the program where you can put your data in. And on here, if we were to go to carving, we've got vet actions and then properties. And you'll see there's a default new group. So literally just putting the number in here. So if you want your fresh cows to move into group one, you apply a one in here. And then every time you carve in the cow, that will move to group one. Um, it only works across the board. That is to say cows and heifers, if they carve in, will be treated exactly the same. So you can't differentiate between the two on that. So it might not suit you, but um, the option is there. And equally for dry, as I say, you can move it back into the dry group. Um, in theory, then, the same options would be available for a PD if you do a preg test. Um, but obviously, that may vary depending on you know when you PD in any case. So, um, so it's, it's a limited option, but it is there nonetheless. Um, other things, group changes such as um, a high group and a low group based on milk yield will need to be changed manually. So I have a really handy tool here, um, this one, change group numbers. Now this is available to all dairy plan users. There will be um, a report like this and many others actually in the root folder, the dairy plan folder that's on your C drive. Um, this one isn't found in the DP menu, at least not very easily. So what I do usually when we go out and train, we set a few shortcuts up onto the farmer's um, desktop. And this is one of the crucial ones that we always do. So if you want this report, um, I can go through it at the end if, if it comes up as a question, certainly. Uh, but basically you've all got it. And if I double click, it opens up there and you can also um, save it as I've done, make a desktop shortcut. So once you've found a report that you like the look of, by all means, you can um, keep it to your desktop and then you just go in straight from there. So that makes it nice and easy. Now with this one in particular, you can see, so there are different reports of this type. So this is DP edit data. Again, it's a sort of component part again of the overall dairy plan system. And this one has an editable field, which in this case is the group number. So you might have seen this style of report when you're looking at your uh, responder numbers, for example. So that's where you would have keyed those all in at the very start. So different aspects allow you to edit different things. Um, this one gives us the average yield and then the current group number. There's several things you can do with these as well to make your data entry a bit more smooth. The three headed cow button 
as we call it, this one here, allows you to choose which animals you want to see on your list. So default being all active animals with all statuses selected. It could be you just want milking cows, like so, and then it sticks in a lactation limiter. And you can see now we've lost dry lead and the cull cows, obviously those have gone already and any young heifers. Um, or you could have a look at one group in particular. So if I choose group one, you'll see it will only show me the group one cows. Then what you can do, if it's an on mass change, is you can go to the batch entry tool, which is this one with the arrows on. It will show you how many cows you've currently got selected on your list. Then you can set exactly and change all of those, which I'm going to do here, into a new group. There we go. So in one foul swoop, we've adjusted all the group ones into group six. Uh, alternatively, you can, of course, change individuals. So it might be, you know, there's a few group twos lurking in there still. However you want to do it, you can also um, go back into your group selection. It could be you just want heifers. So you could then just say lactation one of any group, depending on what they started with. And then you can see we've got a few mixtures in there. So it's a really useful tool, this one, just to, um, to get your group set up in the first place from group zero. So the default will be group zero, but we do need at least everybody in a group one um, in order to then apply the feed calculations. OK. So having done that, I'm using group six as my um, sort of example today. Now, when, when it says save changes here, it's purely the, the filtering selection, not the group changes. So group changes will have applied as soon as you've entered something into these boxes. Um, so if I say no, it'll just go back to all animals. That's fine. Now we can come on to our feeding and the feed calculations. Before I do, I'll just show you the individual one. So again, this is a DP edit data, just like the change groups, but this time it's the feed amount that is in the box. And you will probably have all used this one at some point, certainly when you started off, in order to set an allocation in the first place individually. So again, you could apply the same logic. We've got the same sorting buttons and grouping buttons up here if you need to do a batch entry, for example, the fixed feed. Uh, for a particular group. OK, so under feeding, we then go to feed calculations. And this one we can work on full screen. Uh, right, so what we've got here then, just take a note of the group number that you're looking at. If I go back, you can see we've got some uh, previous graphs set up. So these are ones I've prepared earlier, if you like, um, from a farm system. So this is what it will look like once you've set it up. And we'll go through all the steps now anyway. So really, you do have to do each group one at a time. Um, a little tip, though, you can actually copy one group's entire settings, save you having to key all of these numbers in again, and then just tweak the relevant bits. So it's very useful if you've got a cow uh, feed to yield and a heifer feed to yield, so two separate groups. They are very similar, apart from maybe the top end where the heifers aren't eating so much. Um, you can go to your blank group. So if I just go to group five for a second, we copy. And then you choose which group you want to copy from. So let's say group three, which I've got filled in already. Click OK. And then that just replicates group three exactly, but into group five. And then I can just make a couple of minor tweaks as necessary. So that's really handy. Just a little tip there. Um, I'm going to work on group six. Now you'll see that these have been greyed out now. So it's slightly annoying. I just have to cancel that. Um, come out of there and go back in and then I can move along to group six. Right, so back over to here. OK, so starting uh, very much from scratch, you will have some figures populated on here for the days. That's quite normal. Um, but other than that, there's, there's not anything set up. So we just need to go through a few steps firstly. Some of it might be, just depends on your system, really. So feed type, there's nothing in here to choose a feed from. So that would be the first option. And it doesn't really matter which order you do things in when you're setting up all of the different steps on here. Um, as long as you follow them all through for each group, then that's fine. There's a couple of crucial ones, obviously, in order for it to work. So we go to basic setup. And then you can see here we've got method for cows, days in milk, and feed feed milk, feed to yield. So that replicates in the in the two tables here. Um, I've never used in all my time training on this, but there are op options for body condition score feeding or body weight. Um, if anybody uses those, I'd be very interested to see how that works. But um, it's, I've never had it 
on there, but it is an option. And there are, you'll see there's calf, calf options as well. You can set drink amounts um, if you've got an automated milk station through the dairy plan system as well. We want to go into automatic calculations. Uh, this is quite an important step. We do need to make sure that all the calculations are done for animals in this group. So that's the first option. And um, you can see in this box as well, it does allow automatic feed calculations. So as a general rule of thumb, go into basic setup, automatic calculations, make sure that is set to do calculations. So that's got to be done per group. The herd management is just another setting that does apply across the board. So because I've done previous feed groups, that's already in, but it won't hurt to just go into that, plan, um, that button and then just check, yeah, Dairy Plan makes automatic calculations. Okay, so those two are effectively switched on, but we haven't we haven't set it as yet. Okay, now I've got to go back in there. So you will go into this screen a few times. It just can't be avoided because you've got to click OK to save. Into the select feeds now. Add the feed. Chances are your feed will be listed already. And then we can pick our number one parlor feed. Okay, if you've got different feeds going on, so maybe two or three different ones out of parlor and in parlor combined, you can just add whichever ones apply, and then you will be able to um, do a ration for each each version. So you'll have three rows on each table there. That's fine. Um, I will come back into this again later on, but that's what I wanted to do initially. So we've got our feed type. The next step is maximum allowed change each day. So rather than um, you know, a great big jump from feeding individually to feed to yield, it will change it per day. So this is decreasing and increasing just the same. Um, we are working in kilos on this system. So I usually put in 0.5, but you know, be guided by your nutritionist um, as to what you want your, your gentle daily increases to be. So that will set it at half a kilo a day. Your feed um, calculation day usually starts around one o'clock in the morning. That time can be changed um, in the settings if you want to, you know, refresh it that day so that it's, it's good to go for that afternoon or whatever. OK, um, all of the figures I'm about to put in, incidentally, are entirely made up. Um, I'm not a nutritionist, so do take advice from your consultant feed advisor on what you should be doing here. But this is purely just an example so you can see how it works. So what we have here, there are two different tables, minimum feed calculated from days, and then we've got a feed to yield table for cows after however many days in milk that we choose and over the minimum amount. So it's two separate tables. They'll either be on this one or this one. It's not a com combined total. OK, you can see it starts off minus 14 days just to build up um, for when uh, the feeding starts at zero, obviously going up half a kilo a day so it just allows us time that when they come in to the parlor day zero the calving date has to go in and then they hit the ground running as it were so we can start off here um, maybe put in three kilos there and then day zero and you can see then if I put in three again so they'll be able to be fed um, and say the calving date then once this is all set up all you've got to worry about is the calving date pop that in and then it will pick up the plan as long as they're in the right group as well, of course. Then we have a jump to 15 days. Now you can alter these. So it might be you want it a bit more gradual um, or you want it to go up to, uh, you know, another kilo or whatever. So you can change these date settings. It doesn't have to be 15 at all. It will um, interpolate between the values. So between 0 and 21, it's going to go up half a kilo a day, so it won't take too long to get there. So you get the gist on that one. And then what I tend to do is I sort of stop this table here at this point, but you do really need to fill in something for every box. Because what will happen in my scenario, after 21 days, we've allowed the cows to settle in, we want to then feed to yield. So yours might not kick in for a little longer or it might be earlier, that's absolutely fine. Um, so you could carry on filling in this table, but what I'd like to do is just then tweak the settings again and pop in the feed to yield and you'll see then how it all works. So back to basic setup. And as I say, you can do this in any order at all. So now we want to go to settings and we've got challenge feeding here. So then, if I set this to 21 days, um, I'll just come back to this other point again in a minute. I think deal with one thing at a time. So you can now see my days in milk has changed to 21 days. So what will happen? Cows will start off on here, three kilos of cake. 
moving up to four over that three week period. And then they will move to this table if they meet the criteria that we're about to put in. So our milk value here will be your M plus ration. So what you allow for outside. Now, if I stick this at 20, again, this is purely made up figures. Um, this box here usually stays at zero. So that doesn't mean that they won't get any cake. It means that it will, in a way, force them back onto the days in milk table. So the minimum feed, and then you can start to increment up upwards over 20 and apply the amount of cake there. So in theory, then, if, if it was an M plus 20 ration, you might want that one to start at 18. So your 18 yielders will stay up, stay where they are, and then your 20 plus will go up in different increments that way. So um, again, if I just put in four in here, now these can be whatever you like as well in terms of um, different levels. So you could go up in fives, you could go up in tens, however your nutritionist advises you on that score. Uh, as long as you cater for the, the highest count, really. So if I go, I'm going to go 40, and then I might go 45. So the graph does change as you put figures in. It looks a little bit weird at the minute. I'm just going to go up to 60 there. So again, put something in every box. Um, let's do, there we go, 5.5. So as I say, please don't pay attention to any of my figures. And we'll put an 8 in there. There we go. Right, so as we've plotted that through, you can see there is a pale green uh, graph being plotted behind the minimum. Um, so it's just showing you literally what you're doing according to days or yield, and we've got calving date um, starting up at this point. So what we're saying is then, as we've said, 21 days in, it will go onto the feed to yield table if they're milking over. Actually, I should have set that to zero, shouldn't I, as I said, uh, if they're milking over 20 litres. That's better. I haven't finished the rest of this dark green, hence it's suddenly stopped in its tracks. So then you could do the whole table in one hit, as I say. After our 21-day um, time, if the cows are milking below this level, it might be that they're actually going to be in a lower group anyway, so wouldn't apply, which is fine. Um, and if you have got lots of different groups, then you don't necessarily, you know, it's, it's going to be irrelevant that you'll have a, a 200 day cow in milk. It just won't ever be in that group. That's fine. But we just fill in the figures anyway. So I would keep this to a minimum of, say, two. And then I'll just do that right across the board all the way along. So any staler cows, if they're late lactation, they're not fed to yield, they will get a minimum amount of cake. I'll just put, say, 400 days in there. Minimum amount of two. There we go. So then we're kind of flatlining towards the end of the lactation. Now, back into our basic setup, looking at it from the end of the lactation perspective. So these figures are all saved as we've gone through. Basic setup. There's another setting in here as well for stop feeding when cow is dry. So this will start to gen drop the feed um, at whatever setting you've got in here. So again, you can put in whatever you whatever you think, whatever is advised to you, if it's two weeks before they dry off or seven days. So then the cake will start to drop off um, by that gentle half a kilo a day um, and they'll naturally dry off anyway. So that's another useful setting. So we've put our figures in, as I say, I haven't, um, I've got no you know, nutritional expertise really other than what it does and how it works. Uh, we can then actually, OK, do calculations. Now, at this point, the beauty of this is you don't have to commit yourself. So if you have put in um, some odd figures or, you, you know, you mistyped by accident, it's not going to affect anything until you set allocations. And you can see here in yellow, you are not using automatic calculations. So we have set everything ready. We've done our little tick boxes on the um, automation of the calculations. That's fine. But until we set, it's not going to apply. So we have a recommended only, which is perfect because we can now compare what the cows were on before and what they're about to go on, your total amount of cake at the end of the day um, and any differences thereof. So if we go OK here. And then maximise this screen. OK, so that will need to be done per group, as I say. And um, you can see then, because we've moved a load of cows into this group, 
it's still showing in yellow you've set the recommended feed amounts but we're not actually assigning them so we can have a good look at the figures we can compare and contrast and really decide what we're about to do so this is our curve that we created and um, so the two graphs one for feed to yield one for minimum uh, there is a cow flashing so this is the lowest cow number in that group and you can see some information about her here cow number five she is 137 days pregnant 233 days in milk and this is her milk amount as an average and that's over seven days so that's what your feeding is based on so she is actually now you can see all of these on this flat line here this is where i've mucked about with the data a little bit these have all started from nothing um just because i've swapped groups probably so they are limited by the daily change and they're all set to half a kilo so if I ran this or check this again tomorrow, they would have all have moved up to a kilo and so on. So in reality, that's unlikely because you wouldn't have them starting from zero anyway. They will always start from their current ration. OK, so we won't worry too much about those, but you can then click on an animal, say here. She's sitting on the line, so she's on two, but she should probably be moving up because we've got a 40 litre cow here. So she again is limited by daily change. Um, so cows will move up gradually, as I say. So when you run this, you do your recommended only. Um, just bear in mind, we have got that limit of the daily change, which is important in, in real life figures. But for the actual comparison, you might want to extend it a bit higher and then see where the cows are actually going to end up after a few days of adjustments, as long as you put it back to the 0.5 again otherwise they'll do a massive jump or a massive drop okay <clears throat> if we check out somebody up here so higher yielders again yeah so we're still limited on the daily change for these ones sometimes um I'll see if i can find one uh you've got oh there we go that's a nice example here so calculated from milk so ignore the body weight we haven't selected that option uh but this one will be fed to yield you can see she's a 50 liter cow and um, she's going to have, you know, six kilos of cake. It has adjusted it up. So we've got a 6.1 um, where it's on that daily change again. OK, so you can check through cows here. Uh, if you want to find a particular animal in that group, you can go to your select and that will show you all the cows that are currently in that group anyway. So now we've got one button here to set allocations, but I don't want to do that yet. I want to go back to my setup. And it might be straight away you can see oh yeah i need to make a change i've actually put that figure in wrong or it, it won't be right for that particular cow so you can adjust anything at this stage and because we've set a recommendation we can now go and compare what we we're on before so i'll just close this one down and i've got another report here now again this one is derived from a what we call a factory original in the important report section you've got a milk production report and this is is very very good but it doesn't have the feed on it so if you want to make a change to any of the existing reports there what you have to do is actually save them as a separate one and then that will open up the the design options for you to add in feed as well so i have this template called milk and feeds i'm happy to send this to anybody if you would like it save you having to sort of derive it yourself um, it's one again that we we share with with lots of people as we train them so it's the same as the milk production report on the main desktop there but we've got the addition of in parlor ration and again out of parlor would apply just the same uh, or, or both uh, and then the recommended ration which you can see here so this figure only changes when you run that um, recommend only setting within that group as we've just done so it will go out of date very quickly if you were to check this report in a few days time that figure won't have changed okay the impala ration will as the feeding adjusts itself uh, but just so you're aware the recommended will get out of date right so a couple of things on here it's a really good report for a lot of reasons anyway so i'd thoroughly recommend you use this uh, for nothing else it excludes dry cows so there's no dry cows on here um, or leading up to calving those two statuses are hidden uh, but straight away you'll be able to check that you've got the right data for the right cows in any case so for example 412 her status to be cold she was last recorded in milk now i've got data up to the 24th of march so imagine that's today so we've got an old an old date for her last milking so very easily you can see just by eyeballing down have, have certain cows left 
that we haven't recorded on the system or are they dry and we haven't recorded them on the system um, it's a very good data quality check so you can see um, also the i'm just looking for the sort order which i haven't quite established i think we're just done by group actually we've got group zero group one group two yeah that's what we've done there so if you want to sort by line number just right click in that particular column and sort now there will be a couple of settings yeah it's 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 static by group to start with so that won't actually work um so i may need to go into my design sorting yeah untick that one and then we can sort by care number, so that's fine. Um, the other thing you can do as well, if I just move my uh, control panel down a fraction, across the top here, right, so hopefully you can all see my mouse. Now, if you move it up to the top of the arrow, so the scroll bar goes up and down, move it right to the top, you see that one there. As you move the mouse up just a fraction more, you'll see it changes shape into a line with a couple of arrows. If you drag that down just below the headings and let go, it splits your screen. So a bit like Excel where you can look at, you can freeze panes. So what that means is when we scroll down again, I'm gonna, oh, I've done that all right, that's okay. Um, just the control panel gets in the way when you're doing this sort of thing. So now you can see I've got my headings. I can scroll right down to the bottom of the herd and see my totals. And then I still know what each column refers to which is really handy. You do, um, you can save certain changes on this list, but that particular option doesn't save, unfortunately. So you do need to um, to do that each time if you want the headings to stay where they are. Uh, because we've got our own format of this report as well, we've got a total number of cows, we've got days in milk average. Some of these are stars, which is um, it's done deliberately because e either the column's too restricted, um, but some of them actually won't give you a value. So that's quite normal. But we do have um, an average yield for 24 hour and an average uh, of the average, if you like. So that's your seven day average for each cow. That's what the feeding is based on. We've got a total amount of cake we're feeding now. And the new total, and I've only changed one group, uh, but this is what, in theory, that total will go up to. So what I can do, let's concentrate on group six, because that's the one we, we did. Now I've got another report just like this. So by all means, um, you know, give me a shout afterwards and I can send these to you. Uh, there we go, milk and feed. So I've got all manner of different reports if you something catches your eye. Milk and feeds by group. So this one is the same report, but it splits it by group first. So it does subsections on top. So there we go. We've got one cow in group zero, a couple in group one. If I scroll that down again, then we can find our group six. And here they are. So I did move quite a lot of cows into there. So if we go to the bottom of group six, Here's our revised information. So total amount of cake feeding today. If we were to pick up that plan that we've set up, it would go to 506. So a little bit more cake. Bearing in mind the cows are still adjusting. They're still on that limit. Um, so some of them will go up, some of them will go down. You can see a lot of them have changed by half a kilo, which is what we're expecting. So 6 to 6.5, 5.5 to 6, yeah. So it doesn't give you the end amount. As I say, you would need to change your uh, limit per day to apply that, but you can always do that, recommend it and see what the end outcome will be. Once you're happy with all of that, we can go back to our dairy plan, feeding. In fact, I'll do this and then you'll see what it will do. Feed calculations, we're back in group six. Yep, so I'm totally happy with those figures. I want to apply them. Okay, do calculations, set allocations, okay. Okay, so then we have similar looking graph, a lot of cows limited by the daily change. So that's now been set based on the next feed restart. I come out of here. Now I need to close this report and reopen it because it hasn't refreshed. Uh, yep. So I'll go back into here and I'll go back to my feed by group. There we go. I'll drag that down to show the headers. Do, 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 do. Group six here. And you will see, as soon as you set allocations, the recommended becomes the actual. So they're exactly the same. And as I say, the next day, if you were to look at that, 
your ration will no doubt change, but your recommended won't. So it is fixed unless you go back in and, and rerun those figures. OK, so I hope that makes sense. Um, I think that's most of the points. There was one question that came up before we started, which I must mention, and that is um, hospital cows. So any cows that are on your um, feed to yield, if they're going sick, then obviously they're going to end up chasing the yields down. The yield may drop, the feed will drop, and um, it'll just be on a downward spiral. What you can do, if we pick a cow now, so let's say 436. And some people, uh, well, years ago, we used to set up a, a dedicated hospital group. So that would just be another group number and you can go up to 99. So there's no limit there. Pop the cows into a hospital group, maybe apply a fixed feed for a time or, you know, a separate curve. Or if it's just individuals, you can go into that cow's record. So into DP single, go into details. And there's lots of tabs in here. We go to the feed and then you'll see Oh, we're not on automated daily feed calculations. What's happened there then? We jolly well should be. Hold on. All right, let's try that again. Okay. Oh, I wonder, did I not check my, I told myself to do it, but did I not do it? Let's just go back to setup. I didn't do that, did I, obviously? Right, let's try that again. Okay. I think that's been set now. So you see, it's important to do all these different checks. And if you want um, kind of a, an instructional guide, I have got notes on this as well. So yeah, I must have got in there, but not actually doing it. I think I was looking at group five at the time. Right, let's try that again. So back to 436. We go to her individual feed. That's better. I can see her allocation here. Group six is now using automatic daily feed. Thank goodness for that. Prevent automatic daily calculations for this animal. So you can tick that box and then press OK to save. So that will leave her exactly where she is for that day. Uh, but you do have to remember when she's back on track to then untick that box and she'll pick up her daily feed calculations again. OK, so I hope that helps and um, I'd be happy to answer any questions you have. Uh, equally, if you've got any um, other topics for webinars you'd like to cover on the dairy plan side um, there's an awful lot in there we've got action lists um, there's all sorts of reproduction bits and pieces in there um, milk years we've covered a bit today there's activity you know I can I can do some more webinars if the if the need is there certainly on any topic you choose so um, just checking now you can also raise your hand if you'd rather that's fine if you're all really happy with that that's brilliant what i'll do then i'll leave you with my details let's pop that out of the way um the other thing to say as well we do record um all of these webinars so uh, what we'll probably do is put this one onto YouTube and onto the NMR website as well. If, you, um, if you're watching this from the recording, then that's brilliant. You've, you've picked it up, but we send it to you um, whether you attend or not. So as long as you register for a webinar, um, you'll be in the loop then and we can email you the, the video of the webinar and that doesn't get deleted so you can watch it whenever you like um, but yeah any feedback whatsoever do drop me a line here um, on future topics or any comments at all I'm also on Twitter and um, you know if you've got any questions relating to the program if you're on the support we can we can help you with that as well okay I'll just do another quick check of my questions no that's fine lovely well stay safe and thank you all very much for listening